Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Game Club. I'm Graham. And I'm George. Coming up in the podcast, we've got a very special guest, Renee, the creator of Domekeeper. Well, hello, everyone. Renee, for those that don't know you, would you mind just kind of introducing yourself, kind of what you do for our audience and anyone else that might be watching? Yes, of course. Um, hello, I'm Renee. Uh, I'm making games. Uh, I've been making games for a long time, and uh, I was able to g convince my uh, back then girlfriend to join me uh, and our wife uh, in making those games. And we recently made a Dome Keeper, and that was pretty popular, which is also the reason why, why I'm here today. Yeah, the pretty game popular, is I think, fantastic. Is, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a bit of an understatement. You have almost, or if not, 3,000 reviews now total on Steam, which is pretty good. And you guys heard it here. The, the key to romance is to make video games and convince your girlfriend to join you. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Interesting. I've been doing it all wrong. I've just been playing them. I should have been making them by this point. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it was kind of a necessity. Like, uh, I was making games before but i'm i'm not an artist at all uh, i what i draw is horrible and i kind of just <laughs> needed someone to make to make these uh, this pixel art for me and uh yeah i sort of uh, uh ushered her into doing that and now she enjoys it <laughs> nice That's nice so well funny. she knocked it out of the park for dome keeper it's it, the art style the the color palettes and everything are just top notch they really kind of help you immerse into the game. So that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Not to say that your game isn't fun in and of itself, but I mean, you have a big thanks to her for such yeah. a such success to the game because like just seeing it was enough for me to get drawn right in. Like the pixel art is just absolutely top notch. Ah, uh, thank yeah. you. I'm sure she would be very happy uh, to hear that. You're speaking about an important point. Like, uh, like the, of course the game has to be fun, but there's so much more to a game. And it's sort mm -hmm. of just bringing it all together and trying to make a one good package. Uh, uh, only that can yeah. work, and I couldn't do that uh, alone, not at all. Being able to have that full package is such a big deal of like mm -hmm. atmosphere. Because I think Dome Keeper, like it, I liken people who watch the podcast regularly know I reference Dark Souls like basically yeah. every time I get a chance to even remotely talk about it. <laughs> and so um, I think like Dark Souls is such a full package game. And so I really like in Dome Keeper, even though those games are like not even remotely the same, is I feel like Dome Keeper is such a full package kind of game. It's way smaller, but you have like atmosphere and music and visuals and the gameplay loop and everything just kind of feeds into this full experience of a game. So totally, like you're absolutely right. It's, it's super cool that you guys have kind of hit on that and have brought all of those aspects together because it's not an easy thing to do to pull that off. I particularly appreciate how you did, uh, speaking of full package, like how you did the whole kind of sound stuff. I went mm. into the game a little bit blind. Like I, I saw some stuff about it, but I tried to, I knew immediately as I saw, I'm like, okay, I got to try this game out. And so I stayed away from as much as I could. And so mm -hmm. I started digging down and like the first thing that you hear when you're coming, you hear like the blinking warning and then you come up and you just hear all the like cracking and, and the yeah. bending of the dome and everything. And I was like, what's going on? I, <laughs> what is this? And you're just like coming up and it starts getting louder and louder. And then like something's just like banging its head against the dome, like that whole thing. I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> this just yeah, little cool. experience of coming back up mm -hmm. like sold me on it, and it was great. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think that's uh, like two things, like uh, us really taking care of smaller things, uh, thinking about yeah, well, that would be cool if you can also already hear like the muffled bangs uh, on the dome when you yeah. come up, and uh, it, yeah. it uh, gets gradually clearer. Uh, but also just the uh, great work from Martin uh, Kvale, who does the sound. And I'm I'm just very lucky to have um, have so <laughs> so many good people <laughs> on the team just making quality stuff. I'm sure talent attracts talent, so you know luck is a factor. I'm sure, but you know you're obviously very talented at, at making Dome Keeper. Like the gameplay loop itself is incredibly addictive. So you know it's a you know it's just kind of how it goes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it helps having a game prototype around that's already playable and fun from uh, which we had from the game jam where people who mm. would consider it uh, can play it and see, yeah, okay, uh, the, I enjoy that. I would like to be part of that. So, uh, yeah, that nice. definitely helped. I'm really curious. Do you know 
I, I don't know how much like influence and, and input you had on with the sound design, but I'm so curious as to how some of these sounds were made because some of them, like the mm. dome being hit and stuff, I was like, this is like no sound I've ever heard before. Like what, how did they make this sound? That's an excellent question. I have to admit, I have no idea where <sighs> the like raw recordings come from. I know Martin yeah. is kind of, have, he has these sessions where he just goes out and records stuff like, in the wild or mm. in certain setups. In case you're not familiar, he made game sounds for so many games. Like okay. uh, you can check on his okay. website, and he has like a this big catalog of twenty top games, uh, ga games wow. that like that okay. I consider top games where, that all have like good sound and uh, or great sound. And so I'm sure he has this huge <laughs> library of recordings where he can just pull from, which also explains why he is incredibly fast. Like I have a new ah. thing and he just spins sounds up completely like a new monster. And like w w after one hour, this monster has complete sounds for everything. And then wow. he goes in wow. and iterates. It's fast. Yeah, yeah, uh, but, but it doesn't that's... stay like that. He, he, he does uh, edit in and then we play around a little bit, bit with it and he uh, gets a feel for it and we get a feel for it. And then he iterates. Like some sounds have like interesting 10 iterations behind them. That's so cool. Well, you guys got it right. <laughs> Certainly <laughs> yeah. got it right. And like talking about the enemies, like one thing I actually wanted to ask you was how, how does like, how do the enemy ideas come about? Like, do you think of a mechanic first and you're like, all right, what's, what's a character design or an enemy design that mm -hmm. can go along with that? Or do you think of like, because the thing that I'm thinking of in my mind is the first time I saw, I don't even know what the name of the enemy is called, to be honest, but it's that like slow moving one with like yeah. spikes and stuff. It's like a massive, a sludge mass or whatever. And yeah. it turns into like a scorpion drill that just, yeah, yeah. I, first time I saw that, my reaction was like, I don't know what that thing is, but it, got, it has to stay away from my dome. I'm going to target it immediately. And yeah. it was uh, pretty harrowing to see it the first it's time. It's totally terrifying. It's the same experience I had. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that thing has to die immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's also, um, it's an interesting process and something that uh, I really value for us as a team because it's very open. In the, mm, so, okay. so sometimes it's like that. Like I have a game, or usually that's often the starting point, I would say. Like I have an idea for... A mechanic in this case it was very simple i need something slow with a lot of hp so um <laughs> this actually came from back when it was dome romantic and there was mm. this uh i'm not sure if you could do only one of each but you had this double laser and the single laser and the double ah. laser was obviously the the best route to go it was just so mm. much better and then i thought okay yeah but what would be a weakness of the double laser and that would be like a one-sided high HP monster. Uh, uh, and that would be a good argument to have the uh, like single powerful laser. And with that requirement, yes. I, can, I, I went to Anna and she made a design. And then it, it kind of flows. Like it was this hulk, hulking mass. And I, I think it was like, okay, yeah, this looks a little bit like a, like a, a scorpion uh, thing. Wouldn't it be fun like uh, if that actually came out and, and stings? <laughs> nice so that was oh, very so open cool. but uh, i, I want to add one more to that we later uh, after developing for a while and after uh, getting picked up by raw fury we had some kind of ability to expand and we got uh brandon shank uh, pen usb mic uh, as a nickname uh, to create monsters for us because monsters are also mm. kind of uh, work intensive with all these animations and he does amazing animations and was already close with the style and with him it's also yeah, a very interesting okay. process like I, I have this requirement game design wise, and he makes uh, like 10 different concepts. And then we go, okay, what fits best for that? But then we also look at the other monsters and think, hey, this monster looks like it would do X and Y. Like uh, this looks like it would jump around or this looks like it could teleport or so something like that. And mm -hmm. suddenly this uh, okay. breeds new, new mechanics back. So it's a, back and forth sort of interesting that's nice. so cool yeah it does yeah. It, it's exactly what i was thinking it's not really like a one thing or the other it seems like mechanics birth monsters and monsters can birth mechanics it's such an interesting yeah. i 
I just find the concept of game design and game development just endlessly fascinating yeah. how these types of things can can influence themselves. It's so interesting. And I mean, you guys did a great job. Like, you might get tired of the praise, but we're just going to keep <laughs> dishing it out. Because, like, <laughs> there's very, there's actually nothing that we dislike about the game. So, yeah, like, you guys did a great job with, with the monster stuff. Like, I, we, we appreciated some of the posts you put up on Steam about uh, how, like, your approach is you always want to do something different. Yeah, um, and mm -hmm. I think that really carries through throughout the entire game, um, and the monsters are like a perfect example of that. Yeah, that's also uh, as as you say. Like uh, when we think about monster, uh, we think about okay, how is this meaningfully different? How does it not only like look different and sound different, but how does the how does it change how the player needs to react on this monster and plan around dealing with this monster? Like, mm -hmm. is this something very immediate, or is this something that you can put off for a while, or Something that you try to get the timing just right, like in a in a synergy way, or I don't I don't know, like with the uh, yeah. diver that comes down, you have this like small window where you have to shoot it down, and then it's no problem. But if you miss right. that, yes. it's bad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so it's so cool. Yeah, so there's different. That makes sense, right? There's there is different things you have to consider, like the priority window of like, okay, when X monster shows up, he demands a certain priority of you, and you totally feel that in the gameplay. That like, there's not every monster has the same kind of priority. It's there's yeah. different monsters of when X shows up, I have to divert my attention from Y and reprioritize things. Yeah, it's it's great, and um, it, it, it really goes to show like when you see the final product, you really see that like obviously you guys were really thinking all that stuff through thoroughly because it really, you know, you feel it as you play. So that's cool. Yeah, and I'm excited for, uh, yeah, just adding more stuff also. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got this huge backlog of ideas and uh, nice. yeah, a lot of more things we want to <laughs> add. Very excited for that backlog of ideas, not going <laughs> to lie. Is, is, there, is there any Game Club exclusives that you can throw our way? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we can. Uh, I, I can. I can announce something I haven't really told him oh um, sure that would be awesome please <laughs> yes. um, let's see uh we want to do something for november uh okay. and that's I'm, I'm not sure if if you are if, if yeah, like you are the target group for that but <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh sort of a, p a peaceful mining mode where you don't have monsters oh. at all where you only go mining maybe uh, we add a fuel mechanic uh that would like you actually had in mother load uh, that could also mm -hmm. be optional and maybe some other okay. stuff in there, but just something where you don't have all that pressure because we saw also maybe not the core group, like uh, certain people just want exactly that. Mm -hmm. But there are also people who uh, who don't just enjoy the stress of it and enjoy the game in a <laughs> way I would have never expected, like uh, mining the whole map. That's <laughs> I, I didn't expect that people would do that. Yeah. It, <laughs> Uh, like uh, maybe you know, one or two, but uh, many, many are three. Yeah, <laughs> I I remember playing the demo and like going through runs and thinking to myself like, man, I really wish the runs were like longer. And so <laughs> I was happy to see when the full game was out that um, they had like you had like bigger map sizes and longer game modes and yeah. stuff like that. And so that was great. But I I did go on the Discord before the game released, and I was pretty baffled by the fact that people like a lot of people were like, did you mind the whole map like? I yeah. mind every block and I was like but why it's <laughs> yeah. so yeah I was, I'm just as bewildered but I mean hey if you like it you like it I guess okay so I have to confess because I would enjoy that mode because when I was going <laughs> down <laughs> like I enjoy the dome aspect of it a lot already so I, I didn't like feel like the strong need but in the back of my mind there was always that itch of like I wish I could just take a screenshot, like somehow zoom out mm. and take a screenshot of everything I mined. <laughs> and I would love to just mine every row. But you can't <laughs> oh do that because yeah. the monsters are attacking you. But it would look yeah. so satisfying to me to just see all the edges of the map. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's that's another thing on the on the backlog. But that's not something that's uh, kind of that has a date on it right now. Uh, just some yeah. more fun stuff at the end. Like, uh, for example, I would love a little like time lapse. Of your oh, map, oh, that would be cool. like like yes. just it growing. Love time lapses like yes. this. Or, oh, that or, would be amazing. Yeah, a screenshot of your final result. I did that for a few gifts uh, I made, like uh, one pan across the dugout mine, but that's a joy the the normal player cannot have right now. So for the debugging purposes and uh, trailer things and such, there's a free camera mode 
that could be i mean i could ah. open that up mm. and uh, then you can kind of do that maybe you could nice. have like a okay. gadget where you could very quickly look around because i did notice as mm. I, I have pretty good spatial like awareness of where i've gone and so mm -hmm. like getting back to places wasn't too bad but i noticed like as i really got far down i was like okay well i'm starting to get a little lost now maybe a gadget where you could like quickly camera pan all around your your area yeah. so yeah. yeah love it uh that's an actually a new idea uh we yes. so nice. and it, it's, it's a lovely idea and it's one we could relatively easily do i think like uh like a well, hey. spying glass into the mind hey when yeah <laughs> this is very greedy of me but when you make it if you ever make that gadget, you, it, if there's a little screen, you could put like the Game Club logo or something in there. That's yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, in, in the icon, oh my in, in the gadget icon. Yeah, ex perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's too funny. Very greedy yeah. of oh, me. Obviously, great. do not do that. <laughs> yeah. You wanted to get into something before I uh, continued with the other stuff? Oh, yes. Um, oh, man, what was it? Give me just a second to remember. Turn those gears, It George. was about... Yeah, it was about mining the the whole oh, the yeah. whole map. You know what? It'll probably come to me. We can <laughs> I, I forgot, which is I mean, I got so excited with the idea of the new gadget that it just it just slipped my mind. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, that would be a cool update for sure. I think I think I I would be amongst those that that enjoy it. Personally, my favorite is the the com combination of the two, but I would definitely love the satisfaction of just mining that whole map and just being mm. able to just ah uh, I did it. Just that kind of sigh of relief of, of getting that whole thing done. I think it would be very satisfying. Yeah, and I, I hope we can also add some more things in there so that you don't only mine and don't have monsters anymore, but you can have still mm -hmm. some like side activities you can do. But I, hmm. I don't know how much uh, we can get in there initially. Like we have, sure. uh, yeah. I think we have two weeks after the assessor to make that. <laughs> so... Two weeks are not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of time to yes. do that stuff. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm very, one one thing that I really, if, if there was like two major things that I'm really looking forward to, new weapons is definitely like a big thing for me. Uh, mm -hmm. But the having different miners or dome keepers, I guess, w is like super, that's probably the most interesting thing because that's really what you spend like most of your time doing. So having like a additional gameplay loops in playing that sounds super super cool do you guys have like a time frame yet of when that he'll be coming the the is the assessor right yeah and um <laughs> that would be another exclusive uh yeah but, uh, don't, feel free to not <laughs> don't you have to yeah, offload no, all your secrets no, on you, us. <laughs> you're, you're getting all the exclusives now like uh, oh next, week. Uh, okay. next week next week, oh, next week. Yeah. wow yeah. oh okay. dang this is awesome okay yeah, it's, it's pretty close now uh Oh, that's awesome. uh, at least, I mean, unless there are some like horrible bugs coming up, but I don't sure. expect that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I've been looking forward to that since I think like even before release, I I believe, I can't remember exactly when you guys initially started talking about it, but I was like, yeah. I can't wait to see different miners and stuff. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. yeah. He sounds super cool. Using gravity to like dig stuff up. That sounds sweet. Yeah. yeah I pushed awesome. so hard to have that uh, assessor, the second keeper in the release. But eventually I had mm. to concede like, okay, no way. So we are like, the thing we want to do with the keeper is so big uh, that like, the, this is the most complicated gameplay element we can add a new keeper. And yeah, uh, yeah we had also so much other stuff we, we kind of built up like the battle abilities of the primary gadgets. That was kind of a late mm -hmm. addition to the game. And we thought, we, uh, eventually I had to concede like, okay, we can't make <laughs> it in a good way to release so right. let's do that as a first update i appreciate your dedication to to quality i, yes. I really appreciate that uh so you know speaking of the keeper of the dome keeper one thing that i was wondering as i was like kind of playing along like is there any lore behind the keeper that's like maybe in your head and not mm. in the game but just like some like does he have a name is he from earth or is the planet you're on like future earth or like how's yeah <laughs> anything on that that you could share yeah so i actually have like a history of the universe <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's kind super of cool. uh, without, okay. like like how, how did we arrive at this state starting from today basically right wow uh, okay. it, it does it does maybe sound a little bit grander <laughs> than it is it's just like these uh like a timeline, like how, how we got to Okay. 
And there's also a little That's bit of true. lore around the uh, keepers and who the keepers are and why why they are doing what they are doing. But it's all kind of... Uh, <laughs> I mean, nothing is told right now. And that's... Uh, so, since you mentioned Dark Souls, like I feel like that's one weak spot we have right now. It's, people like to kind of have a little bit of of, of these hints, like, like so mm-hmm. they can start to think about. And we have just too little of that right now. And yes, but I, I mean, we we have the we have the ideas and a little bit of background for that. But then always the question is, okay, how can we add that in in a nice way without distracting from the core experience? Um, I would definitely say that's a good point. There's definitely um, because the atmosphere in Dome Keeper is so potent. I felt like when I was playing, I really didn't worry too much about there not being additional like lore drops. But I mean, it's it's just rife for that kind of thing. Like you have everything set up for for just adding these little kind of cryptic nuggets. Like I think one time I did actually have that feeling was when I got I think it's the egg that houses the yeah. cat. And mm-hmm. I was like, when I first got it, I was like, oh, okay, like, what is this? Like, what's going to happen? Like, and I was, I was kind of curious, but when I just kind of, not to say that the cat thing wasn't great, because I love the addition, but I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's like, just like a thing that's there. That's kind of cool. Um, but oh, yeah, maybe you could, maybe you could like have little scrolls or like ruins or something yeah. in one random yeah. box that you like find and you pull out and I don't know how yeah. you would deliver information through that. But yeah, one, one early idea that I would love to go back to. Um, so we had these little like uh, really like logs that that people wrote like a diary and that was super nice that that was a great read but that mm. uh, essentially that's still like fan fiction and I also thought like okay we could do that but that it's all we are not writers so we need would need to hire someone and then we have to localize it that's also not uh, that easy uh, if you have yes. a lot of that but I thought yeah. uh, what could be fun in a way would be these little like comic strips like one comic strip page about uh yeah that that just explains a little bit of the uh history basically that would be awesome totally yeah Yeah. the art style like already is very like it really pulls you in so that actually sounds like a brilliant idea no that would be awesome yeah i I would you don't have to share any of the lore stuff right now because especially (laughs) if you're gonna maybe introduce that in the future as a possibility but that would be super cool kind of like learning about uh, I, I think you refer to it one of your Steam updates as like the Dome Keeper Guild or yeah. something like that. Um, yeah, so just like I, 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 I had the sense that there was something there. Just <laughs> <laughs> I, I look forward to to learning more about it in in future updates. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's also awesome. one reason why we didn't reveal so much yet that it's still in the mm-hmm. concepting fa- phase. Like we we've got this idea, this written out stuff, but I'm sure it will change in some capacity. All right. Nice. Well, why don't we shift gears a little bit here? We don't want to fill the, the time too much with Dome Keeper as, as fantastic as it is. Are there any <laughs> games that were maybe for Dome Keeper related, but I mean, obviously you had to have gotten into some game at some point to get you to want to make games. So are there any like early games that you played or maybe like your first game and then the first game that really inspired you to want to make games possibly that... Uh, you know you can think of i can't really remember a time before i've been playing games in some way like uh, we got <laughs> a, a reddit uh, like when i was i don't know uh, i guess like seven years old or something like that we got a nintendo entertainment system and that uh, yeah since since then i've i've been playing and then we've got a, a pc later and I, we, with all those like pre-installed games which i didn't understand yeah. as a kid was just like <laughs> pirated <laughs> <laughs> uh, which was very common i always loved games so much and it, there wasn't like one specific game but then uh, when i got older um i saw this stuff uh or this this kind of fr- framework engine that was called blitz basic and there you could uh, like program mm-hmm. your own games in basic and that it was clear to me that was some like immediately like yeah of course i want to do that i want to make games too nice. not not with any like special intent like uh, i want to build a career in <laughs> the games industry or something like that. I, I was uh, like 13 years old i just i just wanted to fiddle around with it and uh, i didn't stop <laughs> ever since interesting well hey i mean it paid off apparently so or obviously i should say only took 20 yeah. years <laughs> <laughs> hey that's okay i i've never really i've always been fascinated from my big focus is on like game design 
and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I've always had like a big fascination with making games, but I've always felt so demotivated because a big, pretty much a co very core part of making games is the coding side. And I've, yeah. I understand coding to a degree, but I just, it's not something I can really see myself doing long term. And so, you know, it's, 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 I think it was more difficult for me because I was just a stupid kid not getting into coding. Whereas <laughs> obviously you took the way smarter route and we're like, yeah, I could code that. No problem. I could do that. Oh, but, you know. I, I wouldn't say it's, it was no problem. It was uh, incredibly frustrating and tedious to learn that because I, I also didn't have anyone teaching me. And uh, right. there were like, oh, wow. There was one tutorial uh, line <laughs> in the internet I could access. Um, and I did that like 20 times uh, over and over again wow. just to, to get in that stuff. And uh, yeah, it, w it was so difficult to, to learn. But uh, yeah, I just uh, love games so much that I kept trying, <laughs> I guess. Well, props to you because I, I took a couple coding classes in college and I immediately knew it wasn't for me. I Before I took them, I thought I wanted to go into software development. After I took those classes, I was like, you know what? I love technology and I love what coding can do, but I am yeah. just not cut out for this. So props to you. That's <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I distinctly remember how hard it was to grasp what a variable is. Like uh, if yeah. you imagine like you, you have never seen a variable in the mathematics uh, classes yet. So <laughs> it was just, just so hard to kind of understand that yeah. concept at first so. well it, yeah. it is very impressive because i mean that's like when you were younger i'm sure that was an era before like all this technology and search yeah. engine and you know online yeah. content now it's now i have no excuse right i could just go online <laughs> and look at any video but uh the the excuse yeah. i have is up here so it's fine <laughs> yeah that's like that's crazy like uh, to, to even talk about that but i think that was before google existed so. yeah <laughs> and that's wow. that that sounds like ancient times and it's I'm, definitely I mean, I'm, ancient I'm, times i'm uh 34 years old so it's not like i'm ancient <laughs> I get. I'm sure I'm older than you, but you're not that much older though. I'm 32, yeah. so I may not oh. exactly look at. But uh, yeah. I remember the yeah. the pre Google times. I remember telling my friends, "Hey, there's this new thing I found on the internet. It's called yeah. Google. It's kind of like a weird thing, but like it, it helps you find sites. It's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very strange. Yeah, yeah. I'm 31, and so I remember. Yeah, I remember the birth of YouTube, and I thought that was super uh, cool. I I didn't get introduced to it like right when it started. I think it was maybe like 2005, 2006 around that yeah. time but yeah it's it just where, where it's come in the last few years is is crazy so it's amazing yeah it's it's just so different like uh, andy like if you want to get into game making games today that's a different world oh um, totally yeah. and i mean we, we can see that with the amount of releases like that there was a, this, this huge explosion of uh, there are so many games coming out and that was uh, like yeah. 10 years ago we didn't have 10 percent of uh, the releases we have wow. this time this That's crazy. Each year this time i was um i was talking to a friend just recently actually we were talking about she she wasn't familiar with like the game industry at all and i was telling her i it was actually around the time we were doing the review for domekeeper and I was explaining to her that I was doing this review on this game that's like made by a very, very small team. And I said, but even though the game is so small and made by a small team, it can have just huge success. You could potentially yeah. sell millions of copies of your game. And she was like very confused that someone could do that because she was like, well, like what about indie movies? Like indie movies don't really go do gangbusters yeah. like that. And I, and I thought, I thought, yeah, that's a great point. Like yeah. games, maybe solo artists and music is a little bit more similar to games than movies. But like, I think games is very uniquely positioned where just mm. one person can make an outstanding game as compared to like, you know, especially movies and TV shows and that medium. Like you can just do so much with so little manpower. It's so impressive. Yeah. And I, I just love that about video games that like anyone at any time could potentially be this hit producing monster and it's just such a cool thing like it's such a great freedom yeah that's that's a fantastic uh, point and insight about this um the potential is incredible but the like mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sure what the english word for that is like uh, if you would calculate uh, what you can expect going in that's very low like <laughs> I, i'm, I'm right. not sure about the actual figures but uh, like most of the games are uh, commercially uh, a commercial fail failure they they lose games right. Right? Uh, they, they they lose money right so and it's yeah. super like there are these i don't know 5% of games that take 
most of the share because of just also of the amount of games. So it's not something, <laughs> I, I don't think it's something uh, people should go for if they want to make money because uh, <laughs> chances are higher to, to do that at a different <laughs> career, I, I yeah. think, and way right. more reliably. But what, what you can do in games uh, if it works out, and that's that's kind of my goal, just to be able to make games and being able to make the games you want to make is a huge right. privilege to 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 be able to do this. Yeah, you really have to have the passion beforehand. Totally. And no offense to indie films, I just feel like you can one person can produce like if if we could say like let's look at the quality of indie films versus indie games and maybe it's because I'm only looking at that successful 5%. So maybe my opinion here is is biased, but I feel like you can just do so much more in the gaming landscape than you can with movies. No offense to indie movies, though I yeah. don't really watch any indie yeah, movies. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how it is <laughs> with indie movies, like uh, how they are budget-wise. Like uh, you can make a game for basically no outside cost outside of your work time. Right, right. right. And that's I don't think that's true for, for movies because at, at least you need a few people to make it. Yeah, you need and at least some, some people equipment. on the screen, right? And that's yeah. also, I, yeah. I don't think that you you don't have this platform. You don't have a Steam for indie movies. Mm. And that's that's a big part. Interesting. Oh. That's true. Yeah, Someone's got to make the Steam for movies. I'm Netflix. not sure. Yeah. Except yeah, there are, there are maybe these, not so much. <laughs> I, I, I always see these uh, new streaming services like Nebula and such. I always see these kind of uh, ads for them. But I haven't checked into that, but maybe it's something like that. Well, speaking of movies and, and shows and stuff like that, are there any, like, what are your hobbies outside of, of, of game dev? Are, are you into any shows, into any movies or books, anything like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big uh, movie watcher, so I, I love movies too. And uh, I've also read a lot, but uh, yeah, like the past year, I didn't read anything because I was only working on Dome. It's it's really oh, sad. I bet. <laughs> yeah, and nice. I, I'm a really uh, I'm happy to stay at home, <laughs> so I, I I can find uh, a lot of joy like you're just you're uh, being at home. And uh, sometimes I don't leave the flat for a full week, and I just realized that I didn't go out like <laughs> when, when at the time when I go out again like. Oh yeah, the sounds and smells so different. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, I can totally sympathize a... with you. I I've got um I go to Japanese school, but uh, sometimes I'll tell my friends like they're like, "What did you do on the weekend?" or "What did you do there?" I was like, "I was just home." And they're like, "Did you go out?" I was like, "No." They're like, "At all?" Like, "Not at all." Yeah. You just you stayed home the whole yeah, just the whole time, play games. Yeah. You know, I stocked up on food on Friday and just lasted. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of an Living ideal weekend. I, I, I wish yeah, I could exactly. do that again. But yeah, uh, exactly. uh, we, we had a kid uh, 2021. No, that's um, not right. 2019. <laughs> Wait. 2019. Yeah, Where's yeah. the time gone? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that changes how much <laughs> you can just spend on your own and just uh, <laughs> not do things. Trust me. I know. I, yeah. I know. <laughs> I have kids <laughs> myself. So <laughs> yeah. it, it definitely impacts a lot of your life. And for the better, uh, to be yeah. fair. But, uh, but it definitely impacts uh, impacts it a lot. Yeah, I, I think it, it had also, like, uh, I mean, our first game release on Steam was 2020, and the second was, uh, ju like, just now, 2022, and that was both after having a kid. And I think that's also because uh, you suddenly have so little time that you mm. know, okay, the time you have, now it really, it has to count. So And suddenly <laughs> right. you, you, you can't slack off, like, eight yep. hours. And, it, yeah, I, I feel like it, it made us more productive actually which is counterintuitive a hundred percent can relate and a hundred percent can attest to that yeah. especially the feeling of like okay they go to bed at this time so i have from like now until then to just devote to the things yeah. i want to do and so it really you know helps you hone down uh, into that for sure so i assume you're working full-time now um yeah. how long have you been doing game development full-time and what was the um I guess what were you if you want to talk about some of the work that you were doing <clears throat> beforehand and then what was it that enabled you to be able to transition into start working full time or maybe maybe it wasn't something that enabled you to maybe you just decided that now was the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> we we just started out this year uh, full time. Okay. So oh, okay. It, it's still a well, pretty congrats. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But uh, I also think we took a relatively safe route uh, in a way. And I, I I mean I see some people that they say, okay, yeah, I just quit my job and now I'm spending my life savings to do game dev for three years. And that's that's a, a, a big thing to do. 
mm -hmm. especially if you don't have at least a few releases on your back and the experience and then if you go like if you want to do a three-year game chances are it will take five or, or longer right. so uh, that that's already yeah funny. but in any case <laughs> so i i uh, studied it uh, and finished okay. in 2014 and then I went to work in IT and I always had uh, good jobs and where uh, like my employers placed a lot of trust in me and uh, yeah, helped, helped me like uh, develop. Uh, I had, a, had a, I would say for IT, I had a really good time, but still, I mean, it's, it's something different than game dev. It's pretty soulless mm -hmm. in a way. It's not a, I mean, you can, uh, it, I wanted to say it's not a creative work, but you can mm -hmm. also be creative in certain aspects. Like uh, you still right. try to find answers to difficult problems, and that's mm -hmm. that's a creative task in a way. But I always made games on the side, and I also like when I took uh, we we entered we started to enter game jams, and then I took my vacation to like <laughs> do the game jams and uh, spend time there. <laughs> so it, it was always like the dominating hobby, at least for for my time. Apart from mm -hmm. playing games, I'm I'm sure I played more games than I worked on. <laughs> on games back then uh, this yeah. sadly changed uh. um, but then uh, yeah we, we started to do the, all these uh, game jams and that really helped us transitioning from starting way too big projects that are overscoped uh, and will never see <laughs> see an end to something okay yeah where we where we understood okay we can finish this that's a path to, to actually finishing it and this led nice. us eventually to our 10th uh, Ludum Dare entry which was uh, Dome Romantic uh, called, called back then and this got the attention from raw fury a swedish publisher mm. who wanted to publish it and uh, together with the publishing came the funding and uh, we immediately kind of signed that <laughs> and yeah wow. that that's that's the story since then and this was so this was so crazy because it it meant this is for it, it meant it was going from just a hobby we did in our spare time to best situation you can imagine as an indie dev like being yeah. comfortably funded uh, working with full creative control on your game which stays your ip uh, which you have revenue share in um with a with a trusting partner that doesn't kind of uh, throw you out if you miss a milestone or something like that like that was wow, <laughs> that was wow. an insane yeah life-changing jump yeah i was That's actually awesome. I'm, I'm glad you said those details because i was actually going to ask you about like the creative control aspects yeah. and the ip ownership and stuff wow they sound like a, a fantastic publisher um it, it was a uh, it's kind of a silly dream but my my dream one day is to be basically what um, devolver digital is they basically mm -hmm. find these excellent kind of gems of games and they say, hey, you, we're going to give you a bunch of money. You're going to just make your game. And I would just, yeah. <laughs> I feel like personally, I have like the eye for that kind of thing. So I, I'm always jealous when I see, you know, like Raw Fury and um, Devolver Digital picking up these fantastic indie games and helping them become realities. I'm always just like sitting there kind of in the background, just like, dang it. I wish I could do that. Like, obviously I have no capital yeah. for that. <laughs> I can barely I mean, fund my own life as it is. I guess what could be a good path to that is trying to get into this position with an established publisher first. Like uh, mm. the, they they employ scouts, right? And they do nothing but uh, look for games and estimate mm. what could they do. Like uh, we got picked up by a scout who saw a gif from Dome on Twitter, and uh, the, uh, our producer, uh, like publisher producer on Raw Fury side, Garnet Lee. Uh, he's also working as a scout for Raw Fury, and uh, interesting. Any, any any publisher has those, so that's that's an actual job you can get. That's very interesting. I've always, um, unfortunately, I've always had like kind of people occasionally in my life be like, "No, nah, that's not a real thing. You can't really do that." Or yeah. you know, even like I, I would have come to Japan five years earlier if there weren't people around me saying, "No, you can't go to Japan. No one goes mm. to Japan. They they talk about it." So I've just I've constantly been like setback after setback. And so I, I've not really even thought about it too seriously. I just always think about it in like a, oh, I wonder or I wish. But that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, it looks like we're all getting things out of this podcast because I'll definitely <laughs> look into stuff like that. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, I, that sounds like it's right up your alley, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can relate to that because uh, when I grew up, um, going into the games industry was not a realistic thing. 
there was no education mm. there was barely any industry and in my area of germany where i live basically nothing so that's why i went into it and not study game design or something like that because that just didn't exist and it was Right. It never seemed like a realistic thing that's possible. Yeah, same boat, yeah. exact same boat. I went to IT specifically because game design, game is that's not a real job. Game publishing, yeah. no, you can't do that. That's not real. <laughs> and you proved yeah. them wrong, and now Graham, you got to prove them wrong. That's right. Now, <laughs> yeah. well, then we started a YouTube channel because that's the <laughs> ultimate real job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's related in a way, right? And I mean, right. Uh, the 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 publishers are uh, at least. The, the ones I see are a lot of them are looking for people. Of course, you can get into then uh, like uh, the, the one like one typical way you get into a kind of triple A or serious games industry is uh, you start as a QA person and then right. kind of transition to some uh, some place else. And I can imagine that works for scouts too. Well, we'll yeah. we'll see if I can make that work as a scout, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling that. More than one of our listeners might might actually maybe rethink their their career choices. Maybe I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I really hope so because I I wanted you know part of part of the thing that we have wanted to do on this channel is you know we're obviously a really small channel and so but we we like the idea of being able to take games that we feel like have a lot of promise. Like one of our content types is like we do like a pick where we pick a game and we go hey. Look at this game, yeah. our very small audience, like there's a lot of potential here. Um, we did it just recently with the Steam Next Fest demos and stuff like that. And so that was mm. actually one of the reasons why we wanted to review um, Dome Keeper was because we're like, this game is going to blow up. It's got so much potential. It's absolutely <laughs> something that you know we want to talk about, even though like we're going to move it not even 1% forward. At least we can say, <laughs> like, look at the games that we picked in the past at, at the very least, right? We may not have had a big influence, but we hopefully have been picking winners most of the time. Obviously, you're never going to be perfect, but that's something that we wanted to do with the platform. Um, and so hopefully, and yeah. then, yeah, along with this conversation, like George said, I hope some people are inspired that, like, listen, don't let your dreams yeah. be dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I, I, I can give some praise back here, like uh, your review uh, was really impressive in that way because it was very observant and picked up okay. on so many small details and also on intentions behind stuff. Like uh, like for a lot of players, they get immersed in the experience and they just play it and the, it feels good, but they don't really know why. Or it feels yes. bad and they don't know why. And you picked yes. up so much uh, of the small details, that, like with the carry, like having two different ways to mm -hmm. express the uh, yep. carry slowdown. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone ever picked <laughs> picked that up. So I, I was I'm like was really impressed. <laughs> I'm obsessively. I'm like obsessively. What what's what am I trying to say? I'm like obsessively observant on stuff like that. Whenever I I impact or whenever I get hit by things that feel great or feel bad, I'm just mm -hmm. obsessive to the point of like trying to understand why. Like okay, what is going on here? What is different? I try and like reverse engineer it in my head and like as i play through the game so yeah I'm like totally that's absolutely the stuff i'm looking at all the time so that i <laughs> thank you for that like george and i mean obviously i mean i shouldn't say just me like george and i made the review together and george yeah. is super freaking sharp as well so you know both <laughs> of us are are like right on top of that so i mean that's that's a big praise so we appreciate that a lot yeah no that's <laughs> Yeah, that that that's an honor to hear that from from you for sure. Because we a lot of hard work went not nearly as much work as went yeah. into the game, but uh, <laughs> a lot of hard work went into the review. And so yeah. you know, hearing it from you that that you appreciated that is is great as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I've read a lot of reviews about Dome, and uh, some stay very on the surface and don't really, I don't know, don't have a good analysis on the core of it or just. Um, and I, I I can't say they don't get it, but they 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 don't really figure out why it's fun and what's fun about it and what's good and also what's what's weak about it. Um, right. And your, yours was one of the my favorites, absolutely. Oh, well, oh. That's just, <laughs> oh, that's, oh that's right in the fields, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Like that's yeah. that's awesome. It's I mean like. I don't know. It, it's one thing to have you praise the review, but you're like hitting now you're hitting for us like the core of what we're trying to do on the channel and to hear you yeah. say mm -hmm. that like we're nailing that kind of 
deep yeah. level analysis is whew, <laughs> gets you. It just gets you. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I hope the, the yeah. I hope the channel also uh, uh, gets this growth that that it deserves. Like I've seen some channels um, also for movies, for example, that, that do great great content, and and some do really well, and some do don't do really well sometimes until a certain point when suddenly algorithm picks them up and <laughs> right <laughs> and they explode. Yeah. so best of luck with that thank you thank you yeah we uh mm -hmm. we've done we've i'd say we've done pretty well so far we've uh, mm -hmm. have been really lucky with you know we had another big youtuber on um as our first guest you're our second guest like you're our second guest we're like a 500 yeah. subscriber channel this is like a dream come true for us right <laughs> yeah, this is like seriously. we're we're nobody so like yeah we've just been really lucky we've been like hashtag blessed by like all these random things that have happened to us it's just it's been great it's been absolutely amazing so can't complain yeah that, that, that that's that's yeah. awesome to hear oh for sure yeah like i just um like the fact that we have even like a couple people that tune into like our streams sometimes is just so humbling <laughs> and so like just this whole last yeah. few minutes have just been incredibly humbling and, and i appreciate it all <laughs> totally are there any games that you're looking for forward to outside of of course don't keep her stuff but uh any games on the horizon that you're looking forward to oh that that's that's a great question i th then i have to think a little bit uh about that <laughs> we can circle I'm, back to that if you need a second <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm just looking at my wish list and it's not really <laughs> it's it's filled with a lot of games i put on the wish list like a long time ago i'm seeing like uh, vampire masquerade bloodlines 2 in there but it okay. had such a rocky okay. development so far mm. like my my expectation is very low although i would love for it to be really good i guess not just because uh <laughs> i also have so many games that i either uh bought or that, that are already out and that i would want to play that i don't look too much into the future i, I think mm. and i also learned well, to just just wait until it's there like uh, i i was very yeah. hot for cyberpunk and I waited ah. a year until playing it uh, because of the trouble. Smart. Mm -hmm. Very smart. Yeah. You probably had a better experience that way anyways. So it yeah. was good to wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm doing the waiting like three plus years before I jump on that. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can totally relate though to the ever growing mountain of backlog yeah. games. It seems like I can never play it fast and play games fast enough to uh to be able to keep up with it so we'll see graham does a graham has a great strategy in which he'll play 30 mm. minutes of it and if yep. it doesn't you know click within the first 30 minutes he'll he'll let it go um maybe i should start implementing something like that because my backlog yeah. is also just growing way faster than i could ever hope to uh get to the games yeah. yeah yeah i had a backlog of like over 100 games and i said uh, it, and it was like years and years you'll just go like i'll play these eventually i'll get around to it it's like <laughs> all right i don't think it's ever going to happen if i don't sit down and i i would force myself to play even if the game was terribly boring i would just say you got to play 30 minutes that's yeah. the rule and so you know most of the time it was exactly kind of what i expected but sometimes you're glad you went to the 30 minute mark because you kind of see the game open up a little bit at that point um, so yeah, it's yeah. been really good um, to do stuff like a game pass has also been a great thing every mm. like three ish three, six months I'll like get game pass for cheap and I'll just like look what they've added and try out some of those games that I've been meaning to play and you know mm -hmm. um, So that's been yeah. really good as well. Yeah, I think that's also like one of the best ways to get a good feeling for game design is just play many many different games and keep an open like kind of reflective analytic mind about playing it Right. That's because, because, I mean, I started uh, programming first and I never studied game design in, in that way, but I've played so many <laughs> games and, and I've right, played so right. long. Like uh, gaming is uh, by far the thing I've done most <laughs> in my life, <laughs> maybe except for you. sleeping. So, <laughs> 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 And, and uh, yeah, if, if you have an open mind with that, I think you pick up so many things, uh, what you like. I'll yeah. also just like what you like and what you dislike, which helps for making games <laughs> you like. Yeah, I yeah. think there was no, like a time smart. when I was a kid that I went from like playing games to like doing more than just playing games, like really analyzing them. Yeah. as i was playing i was like why am i having fun with this game like why did this n64 was like a big era for that where you would play mario 64 and donkey mm -hmm. kong 64 and you'd be like these games are awesome and then you would play like 
Gex, no offense to Gex, um, but you play like Gex 64 and you'd be like, yeah. well, this is a 3D platformer like Mario. Why is it not as fun? And, you know, stuff like that. So then I was starting to hone in on, wait a second, something's going on here. These video games, they're different. So. Yeah. It also helps with just figuring out what games to get in the future, too, because then you mm. can obviously you can't always tell everything from just like a trailer. But as you start looking at things, it's especially if there's a demo, you can pick on it right away. I'm like, OK, yeah. Yeah. This is my jam. This is this is something I'm gonna enjoy. Oh yeah, I, I love that demos are a thing again. Like when I was oh, a seriously? kid, uh, my brother bought a PlayStation One, so I I didn't have any money to get games, and I wasn't also I also wasn't allowed to uh, get them on Christmas or birthday. That's like uh, games oh. are not are not not acceptable presents. Oh, what? <laughs> uh, so what? interesting. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, what, what I ended up playing so much were, were these uh, free demos, and uh, you had these magazines with demo discs, and that mm. I I loved that stuff. So uh, that was that was amazing to pick up uh, like just to try uh, because <laughs> uh, like that was the only thing that was around, and a few games like yeah. my, my brother bought, but that was mostly like rally games or something like that. I was not too Rind. interested in that. And yeah, that was that nice. also helped just kind of get a bro broaden the palette in a way. True. I think true. having a demo it really just displays a lot of confidence in your game. If you feel like you've got a good game, you know, give people a taste and they'll want more. I mean, just recently I played, uh, what did I play? I played Wild Frost and the Steam Next Fest, and I enjoyed that so much that I kept my Steam in offline mode for like two to three weeks after the Steam Next Fest <laughs> ended so I could keep playing the yeah. demo that they turned off for some reason. And so, yeah, yeah like, it was great. I, I that's Maybe that's a game you could look forward to, Wild Frost. It was really good. If you I like card games, it it's really good. It's mm. super good. Yeah, I, I wish that uh, Satisfactory was already out of early access. Like, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Factorio player, and Satisfactory hits the same spot. Interesting. And I have, tr I, like, I, I always want don't want to play early access titles because I, as I said, I want to wait until they are complete and such. Yes, mm -hmm. agreed. We're yeah. definitely on the same page of that. We both don't like uh, doing early access games almost at almost at all. Like a demo is one thing, but playing an early access game is just it kind of takes away the satisfaction that you get from playing it like the full thing at launch a little bit. Yeah, I'd say. yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a difficult thing, but some games are just so complete. Like uh, Factorio basically didn't change like from a one year before leaving early access to leaving early access. There was not a oh, big difference there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a few games that like, yeah, I also try and stay away from early access, but if the game looks complete enough, yeah. Um, sometimes I'll like delve in. Like I did uh, Valheim. That's still in early access, but it was it was good enough that I was like, all right, I, I kind of want to try this one out. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have some games though that I uh, kind of I, I wish they would already be out, and that that, that are mostly <laughs> the uh, games I want to make next. Ah, so, oh. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, all right. Some game ideas I've been carrying around for ten years already, and I wish I wow. could make them uh, and and see them. And, become a reality so and that's that's also a nice big driving force i would say interesting nice. hey if you need a uh a junior game designer uh mm -hmm. i might know oh, yeah one or two <laughs> just saying. yeah yeah the, the thing is uh yeah yeah with such a small team and also for efficiency reasons i feel <laughs> like uh so we, we we have a um intern and he's basically doing game design and programming. So he's also implementing the oh. stuff he thinks about. And that's True. kind of the okay. role uh, I would be looking for. Because uh, yeah, yeah. if you have a game, like you always lose a little bit of, uh, I don't know, e efficiency. If you, are, if you mm -hmm. have this, uh, like if you are one person, you are super efficient because you can immediately decide on everything. You don't have to coordinate. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And I, I can feel that also when thinking about the game. I, I think about mechanic and maybe 30 minutes later I can play it and right. then iterate on it. And that's just mm. worth so much to at least. So it, it, I think having at least some programming skills, being able to change code and maybe uh, is also uh, great as a uh, game designer. That's fair. I've been thoroughly reprimanded with that. That's fair enough. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll have to do that. That's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, get on it, Graham. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I that's good. That's good advice. I think. And no, I'm just in awe. Like, 
like i love playing games i love um i love just everything about games but the thought of like making it and just coming up with ideas i think like i'll come up with ideas as i'm playing a game but i feel like there's already that base there's already something there for me to kind of build upon but just coming up with ideas just from scratch is something like i have like a couple but just just hearing you're like I have, i've had these ideas just kind of bouncing around for years and all that stuff i'm like I don't know how you even begin to like come up with that, but that's, that's awesome. <laughs> but that you have that. That's super cool. Yeah. I feel like uh, this is also probably a thing just where experience is key. Like uh, you have to, when, when people learn programming, they, they start out and they follow a tutorial, like, and then they want to make a game and then they think about, okay, I need an inventory system and they can't, program the inventory system they need to find a tutorial uh, of, of someone else doing an inventory system and they can take that in and adapt it and such but they need they always need this kind of starting point from someone else like how can you do that and yeah. after programming for many years eventually the programmers move to a different spot where they can just read kind of the documentation on the framework for example on the engine and kind of figure it out on their own they don't need an in inventory tutorial anymore and I think it's yeah. similar maybe for game design. Like uh, you start out, like also how, how I started out, I had one game in mind and I just like like that I wanted to copy and I copied it one-to-one. -one. And eventually you start mm -hmm. like copying it, but uh, give it giving it a slightly different spin in some way. Right. And eventually you don't think so much uh, about uh, a very specific game you want to copy, but just more, I, I would say more about the feelings and motivations behind it. Like I, I'm, I'm very nostalgic for many games, and I feel like, yeah, okay, I, w I want to have this uh, similar dynamic, but uh, more interesting in that aspect and uh, built out differently. But it's more about yeah, just the motivations in the game and dynamics. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah, I, I that makes sense. Really, how you, I, I really like the analogy there of of coding. How first you just start copying, but then as you get more experience, just. You know how to do it yourself. That's that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, it's it's kind of similar to um, people who make like mods, right? Is they're kind of mm. building off of that game that they're doing and they're kind of practicing making kind of mini games or even just mini modifications to a game so that they can kind of gain those skills up. Um, that's super interesting. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I, th I think it's the same for many areas. I, I think for painting, for example, it's also the same. Like you would start out painting and you would just try to imitate something very closely. And the more you do it, mm -hmm. the farther you can venture out from leaving a reference and uh, thinking about it uh, in your own terms. And eventually you might only take a reference for a mood or for a color setup but uh, mm, not, yeah. not for the lighting anymore or something like that. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm not an artist. <laughs> yeah, no, that's such a good, good like perspective, I think. That's so interesting. I've not really thought about it like that. And it, it makes me think a lot, like something people probably that watch our channel don't know, but I, I kind of in my spare time do uh, short stories. Mm -hmm. um, and so just thinking yeah. about like it from a writing perspective, I'm like, oh, that's such a like a good way of approaching it. And then as you start going along, you can kind of venture out more and more. I, I like that approach a lot, actually. So you're helping me out here. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I see that sometimes with people who make games and uh, they, I was the same. You start out making games because you want to make your dream game. And that's like, <laughs> that's like the thing. Okay, you can do that uh, after you did it 10 years. Like uh, if you right, had made all yeah. these, these steps in between, like if you want to go into painting, you have to start at these okay i will now try to copy this and see if i can understand the form and such and you you cannot just go in and create something from scratch that's absolutely amazing and this is the same is true yeah. i guess for for every medium or for every creative work in a way even even like now that i'm thinking about even japanese like learning japanese is kind of similar in a way because you do a lot of copying yeah general concepts and sentence structures and even shadowing you do a lot of like shadowing and copying the way people talk and then once you get like a grasp mm. on it then you're like oh i can construct my own sentences and my own thoughts and ideas with the language dang this is oh, like yeah. a pretty great principle it seems <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah that, that that's that's great i mean 
I'm I'm speaking English now, but I'm I'm obviously not a native English speaker. I'm, I'm German, right? Um, <laughs> right. And that I, I had the same experience there, right? So you learn words initially, and then eventually you are able to translate from German to English. So you think in German, and then translate that sentence or try to translate it to English. But eventually right. you stop thinking in German. You think in English directly, and you only just speak what comes to your mind yeah once so you start cool. thinking in that language things really because i you know you might not be able to tell but I'm, I'm i'm english is not my first language my first language is spanish uh, oh so, yeah i didn't uh, know yeah <laughs> yeah and so one big kind of hurdle for me was uh being able to think in english yeah once you can think in english and like sometimes i'll I'll dream in in Spanglish, <laughs> uh, or and sometimes I'll dream yeah. only in Spanish, and sometimes I'll dream only in English. But, but yeah, being able to like start thinking in that language really kind of was a big hurdle to me. So you don't have to like tr yeah. do the translation thing. It's just direct, just thoughts in English, and then you speak it, and and yeah, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, that, that that's when you become fluent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a that's a great principle just for everyone watching. That's just <laughs> yeah, like seriously. a good life principle for real. <laughs> on just like how to improve on things. That's awesome. I'd never thought about it that way. The sad part is uh, there are no shortcuts, right? <laughs> no, no real <laughs> shortcuts, and it's just yeah. a lot of work. But if you know there are no shortcuts, uh, you can get less frustrated if it doesn't progress like you would imagine mm -hmm. that's a realization i've had to come with with japanese in the last just year of just like it's mm. there's no way to shortcut it you're just gonna have to manually do everything and you're gonna have to learn it all so that's yeah. that's super cool that's some that's some great wisdom i'll say that's like <laughs> pure wisdom right there <laughs> yeah there, there you can see that i'm two years older and have no hair so i'm, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm wise <laughs> so wise wow dang <laughs> yeah uh, maybe it's descended upon us <laughs> Oh my gosh. Is there anything you hid in the game that was like maybe like an Easter egg or a little secret that like you don't think people will find <laughs> but is maybe only for your own enjoyment that you'd feel comfortable sharing? Um uh <laughs> Yeah, uh that's actually one thing. Um the pets are assumed to be cosmetic. But uh, m maybe they aren't. <laughs> What? Oh. oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. okay, we're going to have to pay more attention to the pets then. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, I'm not that observant. Okay, interesting, huh? Interesting. Yes. I mean, I, I okay. can tell you something I wanted to do with the pets, but it's not quite there, but it's also, it might not be totally absent also. What I wanted to do with the pets is that each pet has a very tiny effect on something. Uh, and that it wouldn't be... <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't oh, be obvious. You're gonna make me so paranoid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, now the all the all the pet uh, theories come up. So yeah, oh, I'm always yeah, fighting so a little cobra. Maybe it's <laughs> it's my owl. Oh interesting. <laughs> interesting. Well, don't keep creepy community. You heard it here first. We gotta we gotta figure <laughs> out what the what the yeah. pets do, <laughs> what they're all about. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, mm. I, I didn't really huh. Because my experience was a little bit kind of like Graham's. Like, it's not that it was like uh, a disappointment to say in the least, but it was just like the realization, like, oh, okay, this is this is a cat or whatever it is, right? So I was just like, okay, this is it. And so I didn't really like proceed <laughs> to think too much about it. But now uh, I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> there's there's more to it. I I gotta pay more attention here. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, it's also a little bit uh, slippery slope in a way because you, uh, if it's uh, assumed to be cosmetic. You don't, so I, I wouldn't want to tie it to really significant advantages because sure. then people mm -hmm. start to pick the best pet and not the one that's that they right. like. And I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, you can do stuff like that, but I also feel like there are other avenues to do that, except uh, th that are not the cosmetic pets. I, just having like a, you know, if it was just like a 1% longer, you know, wave time in between wave yeah. time or something like that. Yeah, I, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Something in Very the interesting. <laughs> interesting. Okay. What well, you just, funny. you opened my horizons here a little bit, so I'm going to... Yeah, my mind <laughs> is all like I'm being a little blown here. <laughs> do you have, do you have a favorite game? 
Like, other than, obviously, Dome Keeper's probably your favorite game because you made it just how you wanted it. But is there, like, a game outside of that that maybe you would, like, say that, oh, I love this game? Or, like, maybe a game, maybe if you don't have a favorite, maybe a game that you always come back to and, and play for just the pure enjoyment of it? Uh, don't, don't Keeper's not my favorite game. I, I could say that. That's... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's Fair it's also, yeah. I mean, it's also not, not my dream game in the sense. I, I love making oh. it, and it's amazing that people enjoy it so much, so. But it, it's um, it's it's not the game I always wanted to make. If that okay. makes sense, yeah, uh, it makes just sense. happened. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of trouble picking a favorite game, and I could uh, like if it's if it's about uh, I come back to it uh, regularly and uh, enjoy it more often. I don't think I have that. Okay. Okay. Generally, I would say yeah, my favorite game could be Factorio or Into mm. the Breach. Okay. Oh, Into the Breach. Those. Okay. But I'm not. It's not like I've played either for a thousand hours or am playing it every year or something like that. I yeah, I, I have so many games that I love and uh, would love to play again too. But eventually, there's nothing else to do, and I, I'm I don't have any patience for playing things twice. I hate doing stuff mm. twice. So that limits how much I can <laughs> re-enjoy it. Like there's also yeah. uh, Jade Cocoon that I absolutely love, uh, very old. Jade Cocoon. Ma maybe not okay. very old game, but a super exciting PlayStation game uh, that um, was a essentially a 3D anime Pokemon type where you could mm. cross the monsters and they would actually merge the 3D models and textures into new creations. And what? the creations, wow. they would be small in the beginning and when they level up, they would actually become adults and grow that that was absolutely mind blowing, uh -huh. and that's like twenty what? years ago. That's cool. What platform was this on? What, uh, uh, what PlayStation One? Jade Cocoon. Jade Cocoon. Yeah, I'm I... looking at it right now. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have I... to throw some B roll up on here while we're <laughs> yeah going through. That's super huh. cool. I uh, yeah, I I like that. Like one of my favorite. Uh, this is nothing like Jade Cocoon, but like my favorite Kirby game is uh, the Nintendo sixty four one, where you can combine the powers. Mm. So like mm -hmm. this makes me think of like the Pokemon version of that, which uh, <laughs> I think is really cool. And I'm surprised like Pokemon. Well, I guess it wouldn't really fit with like the anime and the lore of the game since they haven't introduced that. But so they can't really bring it into the games. But it's cool that yeah. someone kind of took that concept and applied it to yeah. uh, a monster game like this. It, it's also just so complicated to do that. Uh, the, the, the technical challenge behind that is, is yeah. insane. And I always... I, like let that's one game I have on my list of games I would love to make. Like uh, picking up that concept mm -hmm. and uh, bringing that to to something else because that's that wasn't done after that, uh, especially in that in that scope. One yeah, game, interesting. One one recent game uh, also published by Raw Fury is Cassette Beasts. Uh, this will release so soon, I think, uh, within within a year. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm I'm not sure. And they also have this merging. Uh, thing going on yeah. and they have a lot of merges but they, they got like seven base monsters and then you can really merge merge it yeah i remember seeing stuff about this game yeah i i do as well i remember seeing there's been like very small games that have kind of come around and done the merging thing but like mm. it's it's like smaller indie stuff and it's kind of more recent i'm shocked to hear that there was a game doing that in the ps1 era that's crazy yeah, yeah and it also had such a amazing atmosphere and music and it had these anime cutscenes in between, and it also nice. had a very mysterious uh, story, uh, kind of deep, mm. and, and the the whole lore, and it feels like a Ghibli movie in a way. Wow, very interesting. Wow, okay, yeah. yeah there's so many games out there that I just feel bad for having missed. <laughs> it's strange that it wasn't more popular than it was. Going to what you were saying about like replaying games, I George and I are generally of the same mind of like we I just I generally find it difficult to replay games. There are some games that I can kind of go through if there's enough new about it. Dark Souls yeah. is one, Terraria is another one. Um but I think generally, yeah, like I I even hit a point where I looked at all of like the history of games of like what I've played and what's out there. And my, and then I looked at my backlog and I said, you know, once I get through this backlog, how many more games do I have to play left? Like, I, cause I've been playing games for a <laughs> long time. And when I was a yeah. kid, I would like go on a tear during summer vacation and in high school, like playing emulators to play all the games that I had missed and, and whatnot. And so I was like, 
how many more games could I even play at this point until I run out of games to play? And I know, like, that's not really a problem, like, most people are going to have, especially younger people. They're they're going to have forever now because more, as you yeah. said, like, more and more games are coming out. But it's, you know, it's interesting to think you could potentially, depending on what your gaming experience is, you could hit a limit of, like, you've played all the games you're generally interested in. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, There's that more, though. Like, There's plenty more out there. <laughs> yeah, if, if you can limit it by genre, you might have a chance. But the uh, last figure sure. I heard was uh, L- on Steam alone, you had 7,000 games last year, a release. Wow. And that's, like... That's a lot. Uh, 20, game, 20 games a day. You you can't yeah. you can't even catch up with that. Yeah, yeah, you would. Well, I would have like an arbitrary standard. That I would have to meet like a yeah. certain limit. But yeah, that it's a it's a <laughs> yeah. lot of games even still. Because even even then, like even to my like standard, I'm sure there's dozens, maybe even hundreds of games yeah. that I would never even find. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially would be like take into account localization stuff too. There's a lot of games that uh, came out in certain places, but not in others that we've never heard about Mm -hmm. (laughs) speaking of games published by raw fury one thing i gotta thank you for is introducing me to two kingdoms two crowns because i I saw uh, i saw that that was somewhat of an inspiration behind dome keeper i was like okay this was an inspiration for this game i gotta i gotta check this game out (laughs) and uh i i first actually saw it the game being advertised on like the google play store and i have like Mm. some google survey reward stuff that just kind of gives you some money i'm like you know what? I have enough money saved up. I can essentially get this game for free because you can only spend the Google Rewards money in the in the Play Store. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get it. And I tried it. Out. I was like, okay, this game is ridiculously addictive, just like Dome Keeper. Uh, and I don't know how many hours I put into it so far, but it's <laughs> it's really simple loop, but super addictive. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I absolutely love it. One one of my favorite games, also. Um, and it had a big design impact in a way because. Uh, yeah, it has it has some qualities uh, that I really valued, especially with the original. Uh, since then, the the complexity of the game ramped up a little, and it got more mm, accessible. Okay, <laughs> and that's not. A big, big, I kind of hate tutorials. I don't. I never do tutorials. I always <laughs> skip them. I want to figure it out on my own. And yes. uh, like recently, they changed it a little bit, so you can't really do that. But the the mm. old game. It just uh, mostly threw you into the world and it let you discover all all the mechanics and what you can do and what you can build where. And I mean, stuff would go wrong, but that was part of the experience. Mm-hmm. So that that was that was a joy, like being like similar when we when I played the demos back then or the games in English because <laughs> that I that I didn't speak. <laughs> trying to figure out how, how does this game work and. That's kind of what I grew up with and enjoy and also kind of push for in Dome. Like there's not a lot of explanation mm-hmm. going on. Like no one's telling yeah. you how to move or right. that you have to go down into the mine or how you destroy the blocks. That's all right. some things you figure out on your own. It's all very intuitive. Yeah. yeah and it, it also had this minimalism minimalism and indirection. Like um, you only have three buttons there. You go, only go mm-hmm. left, right, and you can drop a coin. And you, yes, yeah, yeah. The indirection uh, is is also very interesting to me. Yeah, my um, my dad isn't really big into games, but when I was playing Dome Keeper, I actually thought to myself because he is a big kind of sci fi guy. I thought to myself, this game is so simple and has such a great gameplay loop. I think even my dad would, you know, if I recommended yeah. it to him to play, he'd probably pick it up and have a great time with it. So it's just amazing how simplistic yet you know deep feeling maybe that's the word but it's just such a fulfilling cycle that feels Mm -hmm. i don't know it's so hard to put my finger on because the loop of dome keeper is so simple yet and and not so much changes every single time but i think you know what we covered this actually in the review it's those micro decisions that makes the the thing just the each loop so interesting that you're constantly all the time making these little tiny decisions and that's i think that was the secret sauce for me at least to keep it just so interesting all the time yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and you have to yeah. commit you have to commit a lot of times your actions especially if like a monster's coming yeah. from one end and you're like oh <laughs> You can't you can't be indecisive in in right. moments like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that that was a great point for, from the review. Just uh, the all these small things you decide, um, like and it's so so much like uh, going this route and taking this block and taking one more resource and or one less. Yeah. So that that's yeah. one part. But I'm also what I also was very uh, conscious about, and that's also I could say probably very directly from Kingdom having this um these two different states that have an emotional balance in a way so you are not 
like in atomic crops you are always full power you get you don't get a breather <laughs> in, in the game and um that that's in, that's very intense that can also be fun but it's also very intense and for dome mm -hmm. I, i found it important that um uh, we have this emotional not really roller coaster mm -hmm. but you have this very tense battle and then you have this relaxation yeah. but it's right. still and that's also a key thing for me has purpose And the battle only exists to give the mining purpose, actually. And in a way, the mining only exists to give the battling kind of any kind of substance and purpose to itself, right? Because without the mining, you wouldn't be prepared. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the point. And that's also, I think, why we can get away with a very simple battle and a simple yeah. mine. Um, and that's, as you say, uh, not really strangely, but it's so simple. It's simple enough that it appeals to a ton of people, even people that, that don't classically play the games. And that's that's something I'm very happy about. Uh, just hearing from friends where they have friends that don't play games, but then they tell something like they, they didn't even know about us, but they say, "Yeah, I, f I found a game, and it's it's called Dome Keeper, and that that I enjoy <laughs> actually quite a bit." Yeah, and I, um, yeah, that's my problem. That's nice. so cool. That's, I I actually had similar yeah. experiences. Now that you're saying that um, I got the Steam Deck not too long ago, and I was doing some uh, some acting gigs in Japan. And uh, I was having my Steam Deck while I was waiting between shoots and people would be like, what are you playing? And I was like, oh, I'm playing this game called Dome Keeper. And they're like, yeah. huh, it looks like pretty interesting. I was like, yeah, it's really fun. You should check it out. Yeah, <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah, yeah and I, I really like what you mentioned about the kind of the two emotional states of like the intenseness and then the calm after. Um, yeah. I think that's actually something you, you did a little better than... Uh, kingdom uh two crowns is one thing i found myself uh, feeling a lot is like because you know you have your monsters coming in from like the caves or from like the the dog yeah. in the ocean or whatever um and you're like you know it's this big wave of, of monsters and like you feel you feel the tense tension of like okay do i have like enough walls did, did i hire enough bowmen all this stuff and like yeah but you don't have any direct input into like the battle and i often felt mm. myself maybe some of the later updates i know there's been a lot of updates that i yeah. haven't played but uh i felt myself thinking like oh i i, I want to like i want to interact i want to have some input maybe i should get a little tiny bow and arrow <laughs> yeah. that i can shoot with but with dome keeper like the onus is on you like yeah you upgraded everything up to a point but now like the full onus is on you to defend yourself and i think i like that even a little bit more hmm. uh, beyond what kingdom did yeah in, in kingdom you actually with, with the mounts you get some abilities you can use later that's true you get like a griffin right that yeah you can like, whoo, like yeah blow but yeah that's true yeah, but, but it's that's still true. it's still limited like uh how much yeah. uh, they can do without breaking the game in a way like uh, <laughs> it, it is this game and you can't venture too far from it Uh, if if you would mm -hmm. want to do that, you need to make kind of I feel like another game. Different, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. No, that's true, and and that's why I like Dome Keeper. <laughs> yeah, because it, it includes that in there. Yeah, but I mean, for for some people, they enjoy that they don't have to fight, and that that certainly also has true. an appeal. Yeah, the, the the managing of stuff in Kingdom is what drew me to it as well. Mm. Setting your your dominoes up essentially, and then watching how they fall and see if you. You set up enough is also yeah. has its own appeal for sure. Speaking of of games. We cover a game, this is, I, I'm very positive I know what the answer to this is all right, but we cover <laughs> a game on our channel uh, that's kind of like our primary game that we cover. We do cover a lot of, of different games, but have you heard of the game Zenless Zone Zero? No, I have never okay, have heard you of heard, that game. Have, I'm sure you've heard of um, Genshin Impact in Hoyoverse or MiHoYo. Uh, Genshin Impact, yeah, I, I, I've heard of that. Yeah, okay. but I haven't played it. Okay. It. Oh, you haven't played it. Okay. It's pretty yeah. good. I would say. Are you for? Are you a fan of like character action games, like or like those kind of games, like maybe Bayonetta or Devil May Cry? Because it's it's similar to that. It's like action based, not as complicated with like combos, but it is like action based. Yeah. Uh, not at all. So that that's uh, there. There are a few things I I don't play. I feel like there are more things I, I'm playing, but that's one where I have basically no interest in. Ah, interesting. interesting. Fair enough. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, fair enough for sure. <laughs> I, I know, I mean, Anne, uh, who makes the pixel art, uh, my wife, 
she is a Bayonetta fan, at least. So she, ah, she okay. played that. But, but I think mostly because she uh, she liked the style and the character so much. She doesn't play other games like that uh, too much. Yeah, Bayonetta just exudes style. And the new Bayonetta 3 looks like it's just an absolute riot. So that's so cool. Yeah, I still have to get into, into Bayonetta. There's just so many games. Bayonetta is one that I've been meaning to get into and just just to see for myself if i'll enjoy it but ah uh, there's there's just game after game that comes out and i mean that's a great problem to have but yeah, yeah. sometimes you kind of miss out on things we don't want to keep you too much longer so uh, are there any questions that maybe you have for us that you've thought of or if you don't have any questions that's you know totally fair as well Oof, uh, yeah yeah i'm, I'm sorry i'm i'm sp- like I'm spending my whole time thinking about Dome. It just <laughs> took over my life. Listen, the you're the father year. of Dome, so you absolutely have that right to be the one <laughs> yes. uh, thinking about it all the time. Uh, what what nice. uh, what games uh, do you want to uh, bring next, uh, and who do you want to talk to next? Uh, do you have a plan for that? Oh, that's oh we would that's we would question. love to. Uh... I mean, Wild Frost is one game that Graham mentioned. We'd yeah, love totally. to uh, to play that game, talk to some of the people behind that. Um, th- this recent uh, Next Fest had some really good games. Like mm. Ship of Fools was one of my personal favorite. We also had uh, The Night Witch was also really good. That's kind of like a tw- twin stick shooter. Ship of Fools is like a co-op. It's like a roguelike on a ship. Yeah, basically. it's a roguelike yeah. on a ship kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds like you're yeah. familiar with it. A little bit. Uh, I actually I I uh, skipped through your uh, video uh, for the Steam Next Fest titles, and I, oh, okay. I checked out at least which games are in there. Oh, okay, okay, nice. nice. Uh, I, I've <laughs> nice. seen that. That that awesome. definitely looked interesting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It certainly looked cool. Yeah, we did. Um, we even did some um, interviews uh, at the Tokyo Game Show. I was able, since I live in Tokyo, I was able to go yeah. there and interview um, the Night Witch, and there were some other games in there. But yeah. But I would say, yeah, George is definitely right. I have been totally enamored with Wild Frost. It's become my new favorite PVE-based wow. card game. I just, I, if I could play the demo more, I could. But I literally did, like, every single build you could do within the demo, like, a dozen times. Like, I just <laughs> became so obsessed. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't see it before, I think. It's really good, Wild Frost. I, I just, mm-hmm. I, I've been looking around the internet and just seeing, like, a people if people are taking notice... I'm just so shocked that it's not getting more attention because it's such a high quality game. And I understand that like some people will say, ah, it's another indie card game thing. Like I get it because I even said the same thing initially. I was like, ah, another indie card game. I'm good. But um, this one was different for me, at least this one. Like I've played Slay the Spire. I've even played the PVE and PVP on Hearthstone. I've played a lot of these kind of deck builder stuff, but I think Wild Frost is special. They're doing something really, really fun. It's the perfect balance of complexity and um, simplicity and quick turns and quick battles, but very fulfilling and just the right difficult too. It it just hits really good. Ah, oh, can't get enough. Yeah. So maybe that. <laughs> if yeah. I don't want to dream too big, right? So I could say, hey, let's from software. We'd love to have from software on there. But, uh, you know. <laughs> Let's not be too crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it does look like it's set up for success. For uh, right now, my uh, my daughter is now coming home from kindergarten, which will mean <laughs> there will be <laughs> more background noises. So I guess it's a perfect time to wrap up. Sure, <laughs> All right. absolutely. Sounds no great. Problem. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for coming. It's been a total pleasure. You're welcome back anytime. We look absolutely. forward to all the future of, you know, Domekeeper and everything else. So thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, th- thank you so much for inviting me and for your uh, amazing here, review. <laughs> oh, there Sorry. she is. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hey. Such a cutie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, as George said, we're so happy to have had you on. It's been just a super dream. Like, not only is it amazing to just have someone who's made a game, but to also have it be someone who has made a game that we absolutely have adored. It's been a dream come true. So thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, awesome. I, I hope your channel uh, takes off uh, as to, to fit the quality of the content you are making. And uh, yeah. I, I will do my best that to uh, share the share uh, th- this episode and uh, recommend other game makers to, to join. Thank, thank that, you. That, 
I don't even know what to say. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Wow, that's very humbling. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Well, thank you so much for tuning in into this amazing podcast, everyone. It's been a total blast for both Graham and I. We have a lot more things planned for the channel, though. So if you want to stay tuned, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be reminded every time a new video is out. But with that, we'll see you on the next one. See you then.